Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and today's video is a tutorial on how to create a final exam now that we're online only. And so I'm going to be showing you, you know, using my screen recording software on how to create the final exam using the test and quizzes tool on my LMS website. So you want to check out if you have something similar on your LMS. We use Sakai, but I'm pretty sure it's on there on Blackboard and Canvas and on similar, you know, softwares. So I'm going to go kind of step by step through how to design the final exam using this tool, but also things to consider as far as is there going to be a time limit, is it going to be open book or not, are you going to sign it at a certain time on a certain day or let it just be, let's say, the last week of class and things to consider as far as the settings that are available using this tool. Okay, so I definitely recommend doing it on your LMS because of privacy concerns rather than doing something, for example, on Google Forms. But, you know, here's just one way of potentially creating a final exam for your students. So let's go ahead and look at my screen. To create your final exam using the LMS tool, all you need is to open up your LMS class website, of course, and also open up, if you already have an exam created that you're going to be copying and pasting in, open that up too. If not, you can do it from scratch just right into the LMS. So once you get into your site, you go on down and you find the tests and quizzes tool. If you don't see it on your toolbar, go ahead and go to site info, then manage tools, head on down until you see the test and quizzes tool. Make sure it's clicked, click continue, and finish. And now we'll make sure that it appears all the way at the bottom of this tab. Okay, so go ahead and go to the tool and you're going to add a test or quiz. Once you get here, you'll give it a title. So for example, final exam, and you click create. And so now it's just building an exam, just like you would a Google form, or if you created anything on those lines before, it's very simple. So for here, you can have different parts. So for example, part one might be multiple choice, part two matching, part three essays, or whatever the case may be, maybe part one is talking about terminology, part two is about you know, math problems, and part three is application of you know, materials that re they read during the semester, whatever the case may be, right? So you can divide it into parts if you want to, or it can just be one long exam. So automatically we're on part one, as you can see here, and so the first thing you're gonna do is click your, select your question type. Okay, so fill in the blank, it's something I've used, multiple choice, obviously very common, matching, a numeric response, short answer or essay, et cetera, et cetera, true and false. It's up to you to decide which type of question to ask. So for example, we'll go ahead and go with multiple choice. And then it opens up the creation of that particular question. So it's multiple choice. What's the point value? So maybe it's three points for each question and it's a total of 33 questions right and then one point is bonus that equals 100 so let's keep it at that do you want to display the point value while the student is taking the exam do you want them to know how much it's worth or not you can decide yes or no there okay um, single correct or are multiple options correct I keep it simple with just one of the answers is correct so now the question text we go here and this is where you open up the one you've already created. You copy and you paste. So there's a question. You can add an attachment. Let's say they have to identify something from an image. You can just add the image as an attachment. They can open it up and then answer the question. But in this case, we're just keeping it simple. So here's answer A. Answer B. Answer C and answer D. So I'll get rid of these bullet points. And then which is the correct answer? So this question, the inclusion of Cerberus and Merfolk in the Harry Potter series demonstrate the fact that fantasy stories can involve long journeys. Fantasy stories can be rooted in mythology and folk tales. Fantasy stories can have humorous themes. Fantasy stories can have a primary world. So obviously the correct answer here is B. 
And so you can add more answers if you need to, if you don't just want to have four. You can randomize the answers so that every single student gets a different order of them. So I would do yes for that. And I also would not require rationale, right? I don't tend to add more details there. Okay, and by default, it's part of part one. You can also add to a question pool because later on when you create other exams, you can go to the pool and click the ones you want to use for a new exam. Okay, um, and then if you want to give feedback on a correct answer or incorrect answer, you can do so. And then you save it. And there we have question one there. Okay, and then you keep going. So you keep adding questions over and over again. Once you have this part figured out, you can then add a second part if you want to. For example, maybe this part will be titled Essays. And I wouldn't put anything else here, keep it simple. And save it. And now, as you can notice, here's the title for Essays. Part one is called Default by Default. You can, of course, edit that and change it to Multiple Choice. Okay, so then the essay section, of course, once again, you're clicking an answer, a type of question. Okay, how many points is it worth? Maybe these are worth more. What's the question? You insert it here, right? And then, of course, if you want to, you can model a short answer and you can get feedback like usual. But once again, I keep it simple and just have here's the question and here's a prompt. And then they just have the space to answer it. Save it and go on to create that part two. You can create as many parts as you want, or you can just have one exam that has no parts to it. Okay. You can also update how many points are you know, given to each question. You can update the order of the questions as well. Okay. So once you have the whole exam created, so really it's copy and pasting again from your document that you already have, or just create it while in the LMS site. I would definitely not recommend that though. I would recommend creating it in a Word doc and then copying and pasting because you don't want to be midway through creating the exam and then your computer stops working or the internet stops working, the site crashes, who knows, right? You don't want to have that happen. So go ahead and just copy and paste would be the best bet. Once you finish that, you can preview what the exam will look like. Okay, so you can see what it tells you when you go, before you begin it. And then it shows you what it looks like as well, right? So go on and so forth, and then you click Submit. So you know you can see how the process is, okay? Um, let's finish that up. Okay, so go ahead and go back to that draft, and now you go to the settings. So I wanna go through some of these just to give you a sense of what you can do here. So starting from the beginning, obviously there's a title, you can describe it if you want to. You can have students do an honor pledge, require them to agree that they are not cheating, they're not using anybody for help, etc., etc. Metadata, if you want to, you know, you can add keywords to the exam, objectives, all that, but I have never bothered doing that. Okay, here's the important one: availability and submissions. Okay, so it goes to the entire site, obviously, all your students will be taking it. So the number of submissions allowed. So do you want them to only be able to do it once or you know, can they do it three times? Do they have a little bit of time, unlimited amount of time to do it? So I think once is risky, because again, you don't know about their internet access, things can go wrong. So I would suggest doing at least two submissions are possible in case something goes wrong, because you'll be able to see the two submissions. Okay, uh, when is it available? So when will students be able to actually see it going up? So let's keep it there for now. Um, when is it due? Right, so you add, give it a specific due date. For now, let's say tomorrow at 4 p.m. Okay, and then here's another important element. Does it have a time limit? Okay, so if you click this button, then you say, well, they have 50 minutes to complete it because maybe your class was usually 50 minutes or whatever the case may be. Or they have an hour and 15 minutes if your class was a 75 minute class when it was done face to face. So you really want to consider, do you want to give a time limit? If there's no time limit, obviously, then at that point, it becomes really an open book exam. 
um, or open notes exam because they can just be there forever, maybe that doesn't bother you. Maybe you want to give them the chance to make sure they excel in this part of the course because you know that obviously these past few months have been um, very stressful and hard to keep track of everything. So maybe you don't want to give them a time limit. They can have all the time in the world. Maybe you want to give them unlimited chances to take the exam. Really, it's up to you, of course, to decide this. Okay. Um, but if not, then let's say you want to give it a, a limit. So we'll go with the one hour and 15 minutes. That would have been for your usual 35 minute class period. Now, do you want to accept late submissions? No or yes until a certain date. So again, I recommend allowing late submissions, but it's up to you to decide how that works for yourself. Okay, so do you want to get notified when people submit them? I wouldn't bother because then that's a lot of emails, so you can say send me just one a day with you know a combination of who's been submitting them on that day. So it's up to you to decide. And then question scores. So show question point value during the assessment or hide it. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do there. So I tend to just hide it. Now, obviously we're not ensuring they take place, they take the exam at a certain place, but if you want to, you can add a message that students will see after the submission. So it can be a sayonara, a goodbye, or it can just be, this is confirming that I have received your submission. Now, exceptions. So if you have students with accommodations, here's where this comes into play, especially if the accommodation as yet is that you have to give them more time on the exam. So if you click here, you'll see all your student names and you can click individually what student you're giving an exception to. Okay, so again, what day is the exam available? When is it due? And then what's the time limit? So here, you can make it longer, 90 minutes, you know, 120 minutes, whatever the case may be. Do you accept late submissions? And then go ahead and add an exception. Okay, so you have to do them individually for each of your students who need an accommodation. So that's an option for you too. Then grading and feedback. So if they have multiple submissions, do you wanna record the highest score or the last score? You decide. If you needed to have, for some reason, that the person grading it doesn't see your student name, you can do that. You can hide that from the person grading it. Okay, you can send the assessment score to the gradebook immediately or not. You can do that manually if you want to by unclicking here. Uh, if you, feedback, I don't tend to give feedback on the exam itself. If I need to give any feedback, I'll just, just submit it under the Dropbox tool, which is basically exactly what like, it sounds like. It's a cloud service that each of the students have their own individual folder that only they can see. And so I just add in all of my assignment feedback there. So I do that that way personally. Um, but you can decide if you want to do feedback onto the exam. Okay, so in my case, no feedback will be displayed to the student, but then you can give other options here. And of course, if you click one of these, then this comes up as well. And then layout and appearance. So finally, do you want to have linear access? So that means that they can't go back. They can only go forward. I don't like doing this because I want them to be able to change your mind about earlier questions and go through them again. I also don't like doing this because that means that every student gets the same order, right? Um, and so I do random access to the questions. So there are next and previous buttons so they can go back and navigate it and make sure that they are certain about the answers they've given beforehand. Now, as the layout goes, you can either do each question on a separate web page. I don't bother with this because it just takes so much time to go through each individual question on its own web page. You can also do each part is on its own web page. So maybe you have the matching on one page and they have to go forward and the next page is all the, the multiple choice and then the next page is the essays, etc. Or you can have the whole assessment, the whole exam on one web page. Perhaps you might want to do each part on a separate page, but it's up to you uh, to decide. And then numbering, do you want to just have you know one through 33 or does each part ha start at one? So I just do a continuous because then it's easier for students to see how far along they are into the exam. Okay, and then mark for review. So in this case, they can have like a checkbox appears next to the question. And so let's say the student's like, I'm not sure if that's right, but I need to go forward because I'm running out of time. They can click a checkbox. And then after they finish, they can say, let me look at the ones that are marked for review. Okay, so that's up to you. And then if you want to just add a pattern cover, 
background color to it or an image, you can do that as well. Okay, and so you can just save it for now if you're gonna wanna go back and you wanna edit it before officially showing it to your students, or you can save the settings and publish it, in which case it becomes available to the students on that day you said, make it available. So in this case, I'm just gonna save it. I'm not gonna publish it. So you have it saved here. And again, let's say you wanna make changes. You can go ahead and go back to the settings. You can edit the actual exam. You can duplicate it. If for some reason you wanna have more than one you know, exam and like have it separate, it's up to you, right? And so these are basically, in a nutshell, how to create a final exam using this test and quizzes tool. It's pretty great, especially if you have like a matching or multiple choice or fill in the blank, true and false, all those, because since you add in the correct answer when you're creating the exam, once you finish it and the students submit it, it's automatically graded for you because you've already said what the correct answer is for each of these questions. Of course, if you do essays, then that portion has to be obviously graded by you manually, but still, you know, you can have the bulk of it done if you do do these types of questions beforehand. So something to consider is do you want to, if you usually do essay style exams, maybe you want to do something different in this case because how much you'll speed up the grading and usually, you know, it can be easier for students to remember information when they see the correct answer somewhere on their screen versus a blank page when doing an essay. But of course, it's up to you. And so that's how you create an exam using this tool. And so again, you have them come in here and again, decide, do you want to give them a time limit or not, right? You might have, rather than saying, it, it might be due, for example, the Thursday of finals week, but it can open on the Monday of finals week. So students have four days to choose what day they want to take the exam. Okay, so you can do it that way if you do the open date versus the due date on different days. But if you don't want to do that, you can have the open date and the, the deadline to be on the same day, right? Maybe a few minutes before and after the time limit. So let's say you're giving students an hour to complete the exam and it's going to be on, you know, on noon on that Thursday. The open time can be 11.55 a.m. and the, the due, due date, the deadline, can be 1 p.m. And then again, you can choose can I turn it in late or not. Okay, um, so give it some thought. See if this is you know, going to work for you. I think it's the easiest. And again, there's no privacy concerns because it's on your LMS versus if you're going to another website to create their exam. So this is one option and I hope it was helpful. If it was, go ahead and let me know. If you have any questions about this tool, you can also ask me those in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you have your own ideas for how to create a final exam online, go ahead and comment below with them and click that like button if you found this video helpful and subscribe if you want to get more videos on my teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for college instructors, as well as some videos more generally about academic life and grad school life. I'll see you next week with a new video.